Hello all, Four Player Squad Gaming here, and this is our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guard series. We return to the series with the 6.1 patch update of Brave Blocks' Longstop. This is a level 32 dungeon originally introduced in patch 2.0 and is part of the main story quest line featured during the quest, The Things We Do For Cheese. The quest giver is Whisker in Eastern Lenosha. After a few quality of life changes, this duty is more enjoyable for the party and Brave Blocks herself. So without further ado, let's dive into the guard. We start this duty as before, clearing the set of ads directly ahead and making our way up the hill to the Goblin Pathfinder and collecting the key. We then turn around and clear the ads in front of the run stop head gate. Once these have been killed, open the gate and head through to boss fight number one. Boss fight number one is the Great Yellow Pelican. It's big, it's green and it's a pelican. Start this fight with a tank gaining enmity of the boss and the violet bag adds. Aim to clear the adds first and then focus the boss. The pelican has very few mechanics. It can poison the main enmity threat. This can and should be cleansed. It also has a frontal cone AoE. This could be dodged or interrupted with a stun. Keep up the damage and the fight will soon be over. Pick up your loot and proceed. Head up into the run stop and help Brave Blocks find her way through the nasty creatures that have taken up home here. We are introduced to some new ad types. It is recommended to focus down the bias first as they have a frontal cone that can deal moderate damage. Depending on your party confidence, you can collect all these ads together and AOE them down, save some time or take each group one at a time. There is an optional set of ads on the hill here as well with a treasure copper if you're feeling valiant. Otherwise, head past the hill and towards boss fight number two. Our second boss is the Inferno Drake. Start this fight as normal with the tank gaining enmity and the party dealing damage. After a short while, a Tempest Biased will spawn and will be chasing Brave Blocks. The party needs to switch focus onto the Tempest Biased and kill it quickly to save the little goblin. The Inferno Drake does have a frontal cone to avoid, though it is rarely used. Towards the end of the fight, the Drake may attempt to deal more damage to Brave Blocks. Aim to kill it quickly to end the fight and avoid excess damage to her. Pick up your loot and proceed. The next part of the duty is a swamp covered in enemy creatures, again with a few new ad types. It is recommended to take each group at a time as the party can easily become overwhelmed here. A few notable mentions are the Surf Fs. These have a point blank AoE that deals moderate damage and debuffs any player hit with multiple debuffs. This AoE can be dodged or interrupted with a stun. And the Worm Hound. This larger ad has a frontal cone gaze AoE. This should be avoided or interrupted. Anyone hit will be petrified for a few seconds. This can be a problem if the healer is the one petrified. Once all the ads are clear, head through to boss fight number 3. Our third boss is Hellbender. Start this fight as normal with the tank gaining enmity and the party dealing damage. This boss has a few mechanics to be aware of. Random party members will be targeted throughout and hit with a large slide ball. Heal through this damage as necessary. After a short while, a random party member will be targeted and trapped within a queer bubble, debuffing the player and dealing damage over time. All party members need to focus the queer bubble to pop it quickly and allow the player to return to the fight. It's also worth mentioning the player trapped can also attack the queer bubble. The final mechanics from Hellbender are the large point blank AoE from Peculiar Life. This AoE needs to be avoided. Being hit by this AoE will deal moderate damage and debuff the player with multiple debuffs. And finally, a frontal cone AoE, Stagnant Spray, avoid this as necessary. At around 10% health, Aitar will enter the fight and Hellbender will run away. Change focus to Aitar and deal approximately 20% damage to the dragon. It will then fly away. Pick up your loot and proceed. Head through the long stop head gate and up the hill. In this area, we are greeted with more Comet Chaser and Drake ad types. Clear each group in turn. Again, depending on how confident you are, pick up as many ads as you feel comfortable with. We can either head towards the main boss by heading through the tunnel on the right, or, as shown here, head left. Head down the hill and find an optional mini boss, the Jungle Curl. The treasure coffer has now been removed and no XP is given as usual. Once cleared or avoided entirely, head through the tunnel and up towards the final boss fight. Enjoy the short cutscene. Aitar is our final boss. Start this fight as normal with the tank gaining enmity and the party dealing damage. After a short while and periodically throughout the fight, the tank will be marked with a tank buster, Salivus Snap. This damage should be mitigated and healed through. It will also debuff the tank with poison, dealing damage over time. This can and should be cleansed. 
The main mechanic of this fire is Toxic Vomit. This will target multiple zones in the area which need to be avoided. These areas will then spawn huge green blobs which will eventually detonate in a large point blank area around them. The party needs to avoid the original AoE zones and the large point blank AoEs from the explosions. Any player hit will be debuffed with poison and take considerable amount of damage. Ayatar will also target a random party member with a large frontal column AoE. This should be avoided as necessary. This ability is used throughout the fight and towards the end the whole area will be covered. We need to stand away from the first formed blobs and then head towards the secondary formed blobs to avoid this rotation. Keep up the damage until Ayatar is down. And there you have it, Brave Blox's long stop is complete. Remember to commemorate the player you believe deserves it most and pick up your loot. We give this dungeon a difficulty rating 2 out of 5 swords. With more boss fights and thus more mechanics than usual, this duty can be challenging for its level. The special loot for this dungeon includes the Cavalry, Infantry and Battle Mages Weapon and Equipment Sets, I level 34, Job Specific Jewelry, I level 34, and the Lip Flaps Orchestrian Roll. Remember to like, comment, and if you haven't already, click to subscribe. Up next, we have the patch 6.1 updated guide for the Stones Vigil. We are 4Player Squad Gaming. Until next time, thanks for watching.